All right, so while I'm waiting in line to get my car wash, I thought I'd do a quick video on qualifying. Qualifying was extremely entertaining today. Um, uh, the practice sessions had been pretty interesting. Uh, seeing the teams trying to cope with the new tires was very fun, at least for us, for the viewers. And qualifying was very interesting. The HRT cars had only really taken part in like installation laps during practice, and they ended up, I'm not even sure if they turned a lap during qualifying. The crux of it was is that they did not qualify within the 107% rule for those people who... It's a new rule. Uh, it's an old rule that's being brought back this season. Basically, you get your fastest lap during Q1, which was, I think, Vettel. Um, but anyways, the fastest lap is set. Then the slowest car or the slowest cars cannot be more than 107% of that time. So basically 7% slower. And the HRT cars did not get under that hurdle. So there is leeway in there for the stewards. If the stewards say if Vettel or Alonso crashes in qualifying one, stewards are going to let them go ahead and start at the back of the pack because um, we know that they are within 7% of the, you know, quickest guys in the lap, because they usually are the quickest guys on the course, and the HRT cars are not, so they, sh the stewards shouldn't make an exception for them, I agree with uh, Martin Brundle and Eddie Jordan and David Coulthard, who are the British uh, commentators, and they shouldn't be allowed on, they, I am, I'm honestly predicting that HRT is going to fall within the first five races, they didn't really perform last year, um, you know, Lotus and to a lesser extent Virgin have shown that they can at least turn the laps, finish races, the HRT cars, not so much, they really, I mean, I, I, I'm very excited that we brought in new teams, it's time for them to withdraw and another new team to take their place, because they, they clearly just aren't getting it together, their team isn't getting the funding they need, whatever the case may be. So HRT cars are out. I don't see the stewards letting them in uh, as an exception to the rule. What else? Uh, disappointments for qualifying. Nick Heidfeld did not make it into the final part of qualifying. I'm struggling to think. I think he may have been 18th. I don't think he made it into Q2. Uh, so disappointing there. He, of course, was brought in because of Kubitz's accident. He was replacing Kubica. Um... He's not as familiar with the car as Petrov is, obviously, because Petrov drove there last year. But I, I was disappointed to not see better stuff out of Heidfeld. Uh, also disappointed to see that Michael Schumacher did not make it into Q2. He qualified 11th. Um, I think there was kind of the expectation that with the new tire situation and DRS, which is the drag reduction system, which I'll talk about in a second... Um, I think people would hope that Michael was going to be closer to Nico Rosberg, and he's not. He's, he qualified 11th, so that's disappointing. Sutil had a pretty big event uh, during Q2. Coming out of the last turn, he got up on the left side curb, and he had already applied or activated his wing flap and presumably, probably, curse and was probably full throttle. Anyways, lost it. Spun did a full 360 on the pit on the front straight and ended up with the car post facing the right direction so kudos to him for keeping it under control as I move my car forward in the queue um, so major props there to Sudol for great car control for keeping it uh, you know out of the wall it was funny watching the commentators they're like he's gonna lose it in the wall and he didn't he just kept kept right on driving, so that was pretty neat, and, um, so the top ten, if I can remember them all off the top of my head, Vettel, who I believe was either half a second or eight tenths of a second ahead of everybody else, he was just flying, it was ridiculous what Vettel did, and he's going to be the one to beat tomorrow, barring any reliability problems, it was Vettel, Hamilton was second fastest, he did a really good job. Uh, Hamilton was just in front of Weber, who was in front of Button. So it was Red Bull McLaren, Red Bull McLaren. Fifth was Alonso from Ferrari. Sixth was 
Vitaly Petrov from Renault. His best qualifying ever. Huge congrats to Vitaly. Um, you know, it kind of... I'm excited for Vitaly. I'm excited for Renault. It chokes me up a little bit to think what Kubica would be doing in that Renault. Kubica would have that Renault, um, I think, on the front two rows. I think, you know, Vitaly is a great driver. Robert is worlds above Vitaly, and he would he would have that car in the front two rows, so a little bit choked up about that. But um, after that was, I'm trying to think, Vitaly, I want to say it was Rosberg, Massa, Kobayashi, and Buemi. I know Kobayashi and Buemi were ninth and 10th. So, great job there for those two and their teams. Um, so, very interesting. Qualifying was great. So, a couple of just refreshers for people who don't know the new rules. I mentioned the 107% rule. We also have the DRS, which is the drag reduction system, which is also the movable rear wing. Basically, throughout practice and qualifying, they can use it whenever they want. It's during the race that they can only use it within a specified zone, and only if they're within, I think it's it works out to about one second behind the next person. Um, but basically, the rear wing is usually like this, and instead of it being one piece this year, it's two pieces, so they have a flap. And then when, they're, when they activate it, that top flap raises up, which the airflow then comes straight through, um, giving them more straight line speed, less less drag, less downforce on the rear, but more speed. Um, I think Mercedes is the one that has, has the biggest effect on. It's 20, I think it's 20 miles an hour, or maybe it's 20 kilometers, 20 kilometers an hour. Anyways, pretty big, big uh, boost there. And also, of course, this year we have the return of KERS, uh, which is the Kinetic Energy Recovery System. Basically, it works like a hybrid car when you brake, uh, kinetic energy is transferred to a battery. Um, the drivers then get, I think, 6.7 seconds per lap of KERS. Basically, it's an extra 80 horsepower electric turbocharger. So, cool things there as far as the rules go. Um, there are different teams that are doing the movable rear ring in different ways. I believe it's uh, McLaren have a tiny third pedal to the left of the brake. Uh, to activate. Some teams are doing extra buttons on the steering wheel. Um, so, Formula One drivers, in addition to going around turns at, you know, 180, 190 miles an hour, are now, um, you know, activating their movable rear wing and activating their courier system, all while trying to race um, at very high speed. So, very cool changes there for Formula One. I'm so pumped for the race tomorrow. Fortunately, it airs, it starts at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I will get to wake up, download the race, and watch it without having to wait. But I'm very excited, and I think we'll see uh, Sebastian Vettel most likely uh, taking the checkered flag. But I'll talk to you guys later.